All right, guys, a bit of a different video today. So I've always wanted to do some sort of tier list for monster taming games, but I also didn't want to do it for the actual games themselves because I have a lot of trouble, like, tiering what game I think is better than whatever. That's why I haven't done, like, a top 10 monster taming games video. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is actually tiering the different subtypes. So in monster taming, it's not just games that are like Pokemon. Sure, Pokemon likes are a thing. You have games like Nexomon and Coromon, but you also have other RPGs that aren't Pokemon like, like Monster Sanctuary. You have roguelikes like Abomination. You have farming sims that are monster taming. You have monster taming MMOs, uh, Shin Megami Tensei like monster taming games, etc. So I put together 12 different sort of subtypes and I'm going to be ranking them based on my personal preference. A lot of people want to know, like, what types of monster taming games does Ed like specifically? And this is kind of what that video is going to be. We're going to kind of just chill, make this tier list. And um, yeah, I want you guys to know, though, I'm not saying, like, if something ends up in the D tier, let's say, I'm not necessarily saying that that type of game is bad, just that it's like the lowest on my sort of interest list. Like, um, <laughs> I have one of them here as kind of like a meme, but uh, you guys will see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start in order uh, of the images I made. So the first one is Pokemon like, and that's S tier for me. Like when, when it comes to monster taming games, I'm a huge Pokemon fan. I like things that are like Pokemon. I, I don't have an issue with games that try to be like Pokemon, but also have their own unique spin. So not every Pokemon like RPG is S tier, but the the, the, the category itself, like games like Nexomon, games like Coromon, for me are like top tier. I, I really enjoy those types of games. Next, we have battle simulators. Now, when I think of a game that's a battle simulator, I think of something like the upcoming Tamers Arena uh, or, or like, like even something like Pokemon Stadium or Monster Masters and stuff like that. And honestly, like I like battling, but I'm somebody who prefers to like explore a world with the battling being part of it, not the only thing. So I'm going to put that in C. Now, I'm not going to say Pokemon Stadium is bad. I love Pokemon Stadium, but for me, Pokemon Stadium was always like an extension of my Game Boy games or Game Boy. Yeah, it was all Game Boy at the time. Game Boy, Game Boy Color games. It, same with Battle Revolution. Coliseum had an adventure mode, but those games were like an extension of my other games for me. So, so, so like if there was a game that was a battle simulator that wasn't from my Pokemon games or from, from another game, then it would be C tier. If it was like a Nexomon stadium type game, then of course I'd, I'd enjoy it more if I was able to like link up my Nexomon. But if it's just like a game with unique monsters that's all battling, I'd, I'd personally put it in the C tier. Next we have platformers. So th there are some monster taming games that, that don't necessarily have turn-based combat, but instead they have platforming. Now there's not a whole lot of monster taming games like that. But um, a good example that I put here was Mythcaller, right? You have a 2.5D platformer where you run around, your monsters do their thing. Some platformers might also have turn-based battles. It depends on the game itself. But in general, I'd put platformers up in the A tier. I like platforming games. Like if there's a monster taming game that's similar to like Mario 64, but you have like monster taming elements, like to me, that's something awesome. Kind of reminds me of like Nanokin. Uh, even though Nanokin has that sort of tactical RPG aspect to it, it, it's got a lot of platforming and stuff like that, so I like it. Now, next is Roguelike, and I have Abomination here. Now, the thing about Roguelikes for me is I personally like having a world to explore. Um, the roguelikes for me are fun, but I don't get the same mileage as a lot of people who really enjoy replayability. I like, for example, like like for uh, Myth on Island or, or Abomination, like I'll play through the games a, few, a couple times, but I'm not about to dump 100 hours into playing the game over and over again. That's just me personally. I, I, I like it when games have their own like custom modes and randomization settings and stuff like that, but it's not something that I'm super into myself. So I'm going to put it in the C tier, but above Battle Simulator games. I might even put it into the B tier. Well, well we might we might change this. Um, Next is Monster Raising. I'm not a big Monster Raising fan. I played Monster Rancher. I had fun for a while, but I didn't, like, I wasn't as um, into it as, let's say, even like a roguelike or something like that. Like, Monster Rancher was fun. Uh, I had my fun with it. I enjoyed it, but it, it, it's not something that, like, if they didn't release another Monster Rancher game, like, I'd be disappointed, but it wouldn't really, like upset me to the point where I was like super sad. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of C tier for monster raising games just because it's not really something I care much for. But when the monster raising games do have battling, I still get some mileage out of it. 
Farming sims, I gotta put in the D tier. I don't really care for farming. I have terrible, like, focus when it comes to farming games. That doesn't mean a farming game... Again, D tier doesn't mean the games are bad. I had a lot of fun playing Ova Magica. Uh, I was mostly battling. I had a lot of fun playing Monster Harvest, just battling. But I I'm not a huge farming guy. Like, if those games didn't have farming, I would almost, like, prefer them. So I I'm definitely gonna put um, that in the D tier. I'm not super into... Um, I'm not super into farming games in general. Next, we have action RPGs. So that's kind of like... Um, I put action RPGs, but this is more so like action games. So this is your your Kindred Fates, your Laxadays, your um. You could put Sky Climbers into that, but I have I have a separate category for Sky Climbers because I do feel like it's a little different. So like like action RPGs being like that. So I would put them in. Mm, I I wouldn't necessarily put. See, th okay, I, I'm gonna put them in high A because action RPGs have the potential to be like S. But it depends on the combat, right? It depends: is the combat good? Does the combat feel nice? Um, d does it feel like, 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 is it something that I enjoy personally? Like with Kindred Fates, I'm really excited for that game. But the combat, um, I, I thought it would play more like Dark Souls, but it, it plays differently. So like, and that's not like a bad thing for them. It's more so just like it's not what I personally thought it was gonna be. So like. I, I'd probably put that like like a little lower than the Pokemon likes just because like the combat itself isn't my type of combat specifically. If they made a Dark Souls type game with um, w like with monsters, then that, that to me would be like S. So I'm going to put it in high A just because like from what I've seen from a lot of the action uh, RPGs or action games in the genre right now, it's a lot of like um, it's a lot of like like. Um, projectiles like shooting attacks like it's a lot of range like in Kindred Fates Alpha Slifer is really the only good uh, close range kinfolk um, in Cubers there's a lot of shooting Cubers does do a really good job in my opinion though with having the, that close that close range uh, combat so uh, in terms of in terms of combat I actually really like Cubers' combat so far so I, I'm gonna put it high A non Pokemon like RPG so this is your and, and, and like Monster Sanctuary could fit into Metroidvania, but I feel like the Metroidvania part's more like a backdrop to the actual like RPG elements. But these are like your your um, your Monster Sanctuary, your disc creatures, your your games that like don't play just like Pokemon, but they're still RPGs. And for me, that's S tier. Uh, these two are interchangeable. Like I like Pokemon likes, but I also like non Pokemon likes. Like I just like RPGs. I like turn based combat. What can I say? Next is MMO RPG. So the thing with MMOs is MMOs can either be really good or really bad. It, it, it all depends on like how it's built, how grindy they make them, how complex they are, because too much complexity could be a bad thing. I don't have an issue putting MMOs in B. I don't want to dump my life into a game, and I feel like a lot of MMOs do want you to do that. And like even with MMORPGs, like I put Temtem, let's say, more like in the Pokemon-like category. Because it has like MMO elements, but it doesn't really feel like an MMO. Whereas I put like Chain Monsters uh, and Untamed in the B rank. Now that's not to say Temtem is better than those games, because I have issues with Temtem as well. But ju ju just like in terms of like MMOs in general, I think I'd put them in the B tier just because of how much goes into uh, actually like playing an MMO. Like a lot of the time, you gotta you gotta dump your life into it. And I like MMOs, but. And, and I feel like sometimes it doesn't mix too well with monster taming. So we're going to have to see how this uh, moves uh, going forward. There's only like four MMO games that I can think of off the top of my head. You have your your uh, Temtem, your uh, Chain Monsters, your Untamed Isles, and your Familiars. So all of those games aren't actually out yet. So we're going to have to see how things sort of flourish. Next, we have Sandbox games. So Sandbox is your Pal World and your Sky Climbers. There's not a lot, uh, much a lot, like there's not a whole lot outside of those. I'm going to put them in B as well. Uh, they're pretty much interchangeable with MMOs. I'm not huge into sandboxes. Like, for example, I I'm not the type of person to sit there and play Minecraft. I don't really care that much for base building. And I like to have an objective. I like to have something to do. Um, it it's fun having, like, optional content on top of having something to do. So something like, I, I don't know, like, like Grand Theft Auto. Like, yeah, you can go screw around and, like, run people over if you're bored but you have an objective whereas like like a game where you're just kind of plopped in there and you're like okay go go do whatever 
like, like, like that's not really my thing personally so sandbox i'd put in b like i could still have fun playing them i i I'd, I'd play them more than let's say like a roguelike or a battle simulator or a monster raising game but i wouldn't um i, I wouldn't do like like it's not it, it's not top tier for me in terms of my interest gotcha games now, i put raid shadow legends here as, as a joke but <laughs> but um gotcha games are basically like like you pay for loot boxes and and usually mobile games like for me that's like d minus tier like like i i, I should have made an extra tier i i could probably but a any game that like forces you to put a bunch of money into it and and get random loot and stuff like that like i'm not a big fan of um that's why like like there are a few monster taming games that are more gotcha oriented i don't really talk about them that much because i don't really care for them and I i'm not a huge fan of the sort of monetization strategy behind those types of games and finally we have smt like now i just want to say there might be other categories that i could have missed or that i felt like didn't really um weren't really like enough to make a category like i was thinking about putting a metroidvania category but like as of right now, that's basically just Monster Sanctuary and like a couple games that I haven't played. So like I, I didn't feel like putting that as a thing because like I, I was like, for example, Skyseeker uh, is a demo that's on hold. I played that like that was a lot of fun. I personally love Metroidvania games, but then with like, like that's kind of like the only one because then if you put like Monster Sanctuary, well, it's a Metroidvania, but it's more of an RPG with the metroidvania just being like the overworld so I, I didn't include that but if there's any other categories you think i should have um included i could even make like a follow-up to this where i add more and stuff like that like it could be s s something fun like that but for smt likes i had a lot of fun with smt5 um it's an rpg uh it, it's a little bit like like there is a lot that goes into an smt game and like smt likes aren't my like top tier like oh yeah but i do like them now smt like can also fall into like you have like the malice and greed uh game that's a roguelike i'm i'm more so talking about like more traditional smt likes like malice and greed in terms of combat is totally an smt like but it, but i i'm more talking about like place with a map uh, a world to explore characters um like within that map and and, and a story and stuff like that uh, i'm not really referring to roguelikes because roguelikes, I, I, like, I'd put Malice and Greed with Abomination in the sort of roguelike category. Um, but but in terms of, like, like games like we're talking, like, Prying to the Void, Mirrored Soul, Eternal Exodus, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd want to put those in the, in the beat. Mm. Hmm. This is kind of tough. Because I, I don't know if I'd put them up here with action RPGs and platformers. But I also wouldn't put them... And again, I'm not talking about the game specifically, just like the, the category. But I also think I would rather play an SMT like than an MMO. Than an MMO, depending on what it has. But it, 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 I'd say it's probably around the same level as these for me. So I'd... I'd mm. With MMOs, it's kind of hard because an MMO is just an RPG with people, basically. So like... like it can very well change same with sandboxes I, I i think i think i like this order so for recap of the tier list itself we have pokemon like and non-pokemon like rpgs at the s tier this is your turn-based games basically uh your monster sanctuaries your your um your nexomons your coromons uh like, like those games for me are kind of like like the ones that i really really enjoy within the genre uh then on the a rank you have your action rpgs depending on 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 like various factors of course uh, like kindred fates cubers both those games aren't actually out yet so the I, the idea of an action rpg for me is like really high tier but it, it depends on how those games end up flourishing uh then you have your platformers like your myth caller um you could even you i could even put a metroid you know what actually yeah i don't need a metroidvania category because i would kind of put that with uh myth caller like myth caller is a 2.5d platformer so it's like 3d basically but i would also include metroidvanias in there like like uh like that not besides monster sanctuary because monster sanctuary is kind of like more like an rpg but yeah so platforming games whether they be metroidvania or 3d or 2.5d or whatever that's up there then you got your smt like games you know they're rpgs they're turn-based but but they more they, they more follow the SMT formula. They 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 got like their their fusion. They got their um their uh, push battle system, whatever it's called. With with the I forget what it's called. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. The battle system's the way it is, etc. Then you got your MMOs. 
Uh, I like MMOs. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how they blend with monster taming just yet based on what we've seen, but I, I'm definitely um, open to a lot of the MMOs that are coming. Then you have your sandbox. You can have fun with it. I think sandboxes are the types of games you want to play with your friends. I don't have that many friends. That's why I have subscribers. <laughs> but but uh, sandboxes could be fun if I play with you guys. Uh, then you have your roguelikes. I enjoy roguelikes. I'm not going to dump my life into them, though. Um, then you have your battle simulators. I, I'm, I like battling, but not enough to like sit and battle for days. Uh, then you have your monster raising games. Again, like I, I, I enjoyed what I played, but for me, it gets it gets old really fast. Then you have your farming games. I, I don't really have any interest in farming at all, like zero. Like I, I couldn't care less when it comes to farming. Then you got your gotcha games where it's just like, eh, no, 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 thank you. But yeah, that's my, my monster taming tier list. Let me know if you guys agree with it. Let me know what your guys' tier list is. I'm pretty sure I can like save and um, share this template. Uh, this is my first time actually using the tier maker site. So if that's the case, I'll uh, link it down below so you guys can make your own. Tag me on Twitter. You can at me and uh, you know show me your version of this list. And uh, yeah, uh, th that's pretty much it. Special thanks to my patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, uh, Dark Persona, Drogue Ghost, and Steel Case. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I put out monster taming videos every day and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.